This is Professor Derf Seitz. This Java tutorial is about graphical user interface button components. The components we'll be looking at are checkboxes, radio buttons, and command buttons. Here's the example program with the GUI. We can check any of these tree checkboxes here. The radio buttons are initially disabled. We have to check the water access in order to pick whether we want lake, ocean, or river. Notice that the radio buttons are mutually exclusive. You can only pick one. We can display the trees that have been checked here. Display the water, in this case river. We can reset everything. And we can pack the window which resizes it to be as small as possible according to the preferred sizes of the components or we can unpack it which is a preferred user interface size that was specified. Notice that the pack window uh, takes two lines there and its tooltip here also has two lines. We'll look at that. So again, we'll check a few of these, check that, and let's go look at the code. Here's the program. We're going to want to focus on the, the buttons, the check boxes, radio buttons, and command buttons. Our class extends JFrame. We have our components defined here. A button group is required for the radio buttons. They must be added to a button group in order to make them mutually exclusive. Our command buttons are here, checkboxes, labels, radio button, buttons, and then some program logic. There's a, a boolean here that we'll be using. Fonts, we'll be changing some of the fonts to uh, some bold and plain 14 point rather than the default 12 point. Here is the uh, strings that are used to have the multi-line tooltip and the multi-line button text. The way it works is you put the HTML tag and closing tag around your text and then you can use HTML and, and the BR uh, tag is what breaks the line. All the HTML tags have angle brackets around them. The center tag and closing center tag are also HTML. The constructor we call the superclass. There's a set fonts function we'll look at to change the fonts to the 14 point. We get the content pane we're going to use a grid layout manager. If you don't know about layout managers, just ignore that part. But it has one column, and everything is equally spaced in that one column, the different components that we'll add. We create our components, our title, telling it to be centered. It has a larger bold font. Our tree radio buttons, no, check boxes rather, are instantiated here. Our radio buttons are instantiated here. And here's the button group where we add them to the button group. Our command buttons right here. We set the tooltip text of the pack window button, set tooltip text. Then we're going to add the components to the content. Contents, we add the title. And in order to, for the grid to have all these things on different places in the column, we have to put some of them in a panel. So the trees are all in a panel called panel trees. And we add each one of those to panel trees. And then we add panel trees to the contents. Similarly, the 
here are the radio buttons are in a panel called panel water we add the checkbox the three radio buttons to the to that panel and then we add that panel to our content pane enabling water false is a function that we'll look at later in this program. It's going to disable all those radio buttons. Our command buttons also have a panel called panel buttons so they can all be considered as one component in terms of the grid layout. This is how you set a submit button. Get root pane set default button. The button the default button is a button if you hit the enter key on the keyboard it's as though you click the button and it has a darker border around it we'll see that when we run the program again event handlers we have two event handlers in here command handler and an option handler we'll be looking at those and in order for the handlers to get the events we have to register them so we take the appropriate components that are going to be firing events of interest, the buttons here, and also the, the water checkbox, and we call the appropriate add functions to register these event handlers. We set the size of our window and set its visibility. Here's the enable water function takes a boolean and it is responsible for clearing out uh, the radio buttons uh, settings as appropriate and enabling or disabling them. Here's the pack window which calls a pack function. When it's packed it makes resizing it false. The user is not allowed to resize it when we call that. We change the text in the radio button and then here's the unpack down here. Set fonts. This is how you set the fonts. Use a UI manager. Put these tags here for the different buttons, checkboxes, labels and we use the bold for the labels and the buttons and the regular plain font for the checkboxes and the radio buttons. Our command handler it implements an action listener interface which has an action performed. We get the event that's fired and get its source and we compare it to see if it's from the display trees, the display water, the pack, or the reset and appropriately whichever one we call a function and then return. Display trees uses is selected on the checkboxes and builds up a string based on what's selected and if something is selected we get its text which is the label of the checkbox and then the way we've built it up we have some extra logic here to remove the extra comma space at the end or if there was nothing checked we are going to display none and then we use J option pane to show a dialog Display water works similarly. Reset, set selected for all these things to false, called enable water false. The option handler is for the check water checkbox, and we're going to call enable water based on its selection state. And here's the main function of this program that instantiates the class so that things can start running. Looking up at the top again here, we looked at changing fonts, event handling, HTML in the labels and tooltips, the layout managers, uh, we have a grid layout and each panel uses a flow layout use of panels for grouping and layout, the submit button, the window packing and unpacking, we looked at all those. Let's
go back to the user interface now and, and look at it again. Now that we've looked at the code, we can talk about this uh, a little bit more detail. The grid, there's the first row of the grid. It's one column, really. So that's the first item in the column. Next, this group right here, which is a J panel of all these things put in there, is next. <clears throat> this is a J panel here. These buttons are a J panel here. So the column grid simply has a title, a J panel, a J panel, a J panel in it. And it makes each one of those, I'll say rows, even though there's really no row, it's just one column, one of those items, the same size in terms of the height. We can click all these, whatever we want here, enable that. The reset button, as long as we have the focus here, you can see it has a darker border. If I hit the enter key, it fires it. So, I mean, it's not... It's the submit button actually, but it's called reset, but it has a submit button functionality. If we display trees right now, there's none selected, water, none selected. So we see here the, the basic button components, um, checkboxes, radio buttons, and command buttons, and how we can put them in a simple application for demonstrative purposes. In a real graphical user interface you would use a GUI builder tool but for learning programming we're just dealing with simple examples here so that you can understand the basic concepts.